Hello, hello, it's the Late Challenge, episode 18 we're on now. Uh, and we're all nice and relaxed, I think, because, you know, we've had some glorious uh, weather the last few days. Um, I I was bouncing around in the house the other day and like, I just, you know, shouted out to Alexa, like, you know, when's it next going to rain? And it goes, ten, there is no rain forecast for 10 days. And I was like, oh, get in. And I was literally like, I was literally bouncing around because like, I, I just think this weather, like when it, this, this season, it's just so much better than all of the others. Like, I, I don't get this blag when you see like people saying, oh, I love the autumn. Or, oh, I like a, a crisp winter's day. Like, fuck off. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, there's not, you can't beat the sun, the sunshine, you know, like that, that weather. Just everything's better. You know, bad places look good. It feels good. It feels good to go outside. You can go outside. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, like last night I just went for a walk randomly. It just felt like. Walk around Stanley Park and that. Mm. And it was great. Nice. Dead nice. Are you into it? Are you into the summer? Yeah, but the first thing I thought, it was funny because when when you sent me this before and I just read through the agenda quickly, I thought you'd said you'd ask chat GPT. So that shows how much in my head. I'm, I think you're just obsessed with, but I so it shows how much I'm obsessed with chat GPT. Because I was like, how oh, does chat GPT know what the weather's going to be like? It's I stopped was being programmed. To it last night. I, I know I, you would have been. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. But I love the way you're, you're, you, without realising that you're well into your AI, you're bouncing around the house speaking to Alexa. Oh, yeah. You'll defo have a bird soon, I reckon. Oh, I shouldn't really say that, should I? Because you've got a bird. I've got one, uh, you'd yeah. have to. Be, well, maybe would Jack and Debbie be all right? This is a mad start of the show, isn't it? It is. Jack and Debbie would be all right I'll with you it. having an AI bird as well. Depends that's a whole new doing. thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a whole new thing that's going to start now, isn't it? It's going to be it's, it's an Is it cheating if your bird's got a fella, but he's AI? There's some, there's some girl, isn't there, who's like um, programmed an AI in her voice and there's people paying like to have her voice saying things about them. Yeah, I've heard people be doing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. Like, um, thinking, like Adrian Giles. I, I was arguing with AI la, last night. I had, I, had a little, I had a little glass of wine like, and like, you know, I was just chilling out, writing this agenda and stuff, having a nice night. Like, and then I got on to chat GPT, you know, I don't know, I don't know how I got down this rabbit hole, like, but when I got up this morning, I was rereading it, laughing my head off. So I was arguing with it, that Jabba the Hutt was a prick. <laughs> And it was it it was being like you might think that and all this, but blah 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 blah. And like it was trying to it was like being diplomatic. And I said I said it's a fictional character, and he and he's, he's literally scripted to be a blade. He's not a Sam fella. Do you know what I, that's what I love about it though. Someone said it might have been in our Patreon comments this week. Like they love the they love the slang language, which I, I assume is mainly from you. But I love that you're without realizing that you're training. AI, chat GPT, all these words. Oh, so yeah. it's going back to like, at the end of the day, I, I like picturing things as like personifying things. Chat GPT is going back to the other AI is going, you know what a blurt is? It does that, like, what? you know? What's it, a blurt? It I was chatting it. to Robbo again today and he kept calling Jabba the Hutter blurt. I was like, what the fuck's that? It was throwing it back in, like, do you know what I mean? It was using my Did phrase it back, back at me, but it, it put speech marks in, but it's so funny. To, to read it, read it, say, innit? Well, you're going to talk about that later, aren't we? So the sun thing, um, yeah, Joe, you know it's mad though, because you're right. And it's funny, it's funny, my, the arguments that go inside my own head. I love the sun, but I used to love it more than I do now. And I used to have, I used to have in my head that like, I wanted to live in a sunny country. And then when I went away traveling a few years ago, like I was in places where it was so hot, <laughs> you'd leave the house and two seconds later, you're just sweating. Yeah. And your clothes are oh, sweating yeah, yeah, and yeah, sticking yeah. to you. And I remember fun. thinking, but when I was a kid and loved this, it was because I was on holiday in my shorts by the pool. Do you know what I mean? It's different when you've got to go to work every day and mm. it's not air conditioned and all that. And it's, I think this is the, this is the most simple example of like how we get programmed as kids. Because when you're a kid, think about your kids, your kids don't give a shit what the weather is. We get programmed like literally adults open the curtains and go, it's a good day today because it's sunny. Or they open the curtains and go, it's a shit day today because it's raining. But so it as you grow up, nice you go, don't it? I mean, yeah, I, but I, I don't, that, I don't that's because think... I've, I've reprogrammed my brain. That's mad, isn't it? But I don't think that's programming because I think if you like, if you go outside and feel the sun on your face, you don't need someone to tell you that that's nice. Equally, if you go outside and it piss, it's pissing down on you and you know it's cold, that doesn't feel pleasant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but like, it can't. That, that, that's why it's programming. I can so I can go out in the winter now, right, and and enjoy it. It was someone. It, might, it was someone through the rap said once, it might have been Tim O'Tierney. And it was boss, it's, but I've heard the line somewhere else, so he's got it from somewhere else, as we all get everything. 
But he said something like, there's no such thing as the wrong weather, only the wrong clothes. Mm. And I'm thinking, it's, that's boss, that. Because well, if you've got, yeah. don't you don't you enjoy it? Like getting a boss coat on and getting out in the rain and like feeling the wind on your face. See, I love all that now. And at the same time, don't get me wrong, I'm doing the thing where I'm just arguing for the sake of arguing. Because yeah. the sun is boss. sun is boss. Um, and I like, well, I'll, t- I'll, I'll take it and see whether, whether you do this in my weirdo lifestyle now. I'll like be in the park and I'll take my shoes and socks off to walk off to walk on the grass. Oh. Do you do that? I've never done that. I'd be a bit worried about, you know, plowing through a dog egg, I think. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um and getting that in between my toes. Yeah. That's not a it's not a good thought. I do it? look out for it. Like I'm not just <laughs> I'm not just running around <laughs> willy nilly, like putting my feet anywhere. I, I've got one for you as well. I've got I've got a few things, just like, you know, little little life updates, like mm, um, little things that have happened to me that I just thought I'd throw in. So I had a couple of days in a in a caravan, thanks Paula Murphy. Um in North Wales. And um like, I feel like I want to buy one now. Oh, do you? Yeah, because what type of, a, well, let's, we need to get into the details then. What type of caravan? One of, is it one of the little caravans? Three bedroom. Yeah, see, this is, you've got to be careful when you're talking about caravans because, like, yeah. when we were growing up, a caravan was the ones, the little farty things yeah, where you're banging the your royal head family. All the time. Have you seen the royal family episode where yeah, they yeah, yeah. It's one of them where they're like, you're having a shit and you're about three foot. Now, away this from is the like cooker. the ones that them, that couple, the, or that, that that woman and the, the fella living on Goggle Box, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, well, I'd ex- that's it. I'd expect Paula to have a nice one like yeah. that, but I just wanted to check because you know, that's a different thing, isn't it? You're basically staying in like a nice apartment, yeah. aren't you? But it's boss. I, I was just thinking, like, I like the concept of it now, and it must be an age thing, obviously. I mean, I'm literally 47 this month. Um, but I was just like, the, I like the idea that it, it's just there, and, like, at any time, you could just go, I'm I'm going to the caravan, see you yeah, in a bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I've got nothing on the next couple of days, go in the caravan, or look out the window, it's hot, sad, go in the caravan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. Where was like, it? Where about in Wales? Uh, Saint Asif, uh, oh yeah, God, home, that, home of Russia. Yeah, we talked about yeah. it on the Patreon show, didn't we? But uh, even that, there was a bit that I didn't tell you, which was me um, talking in the local chippy, to, saying like, "Why is why is there nothing about Ian Russia?" You know what? And they, and the woman was like, "What?" And I and I went, "Ian Rush, Liverpool's record goal scorers." You know, grew up right round here. And she's like, "Did he?" And she shouted in the back to some fella, and he was just like, "Of course he did. Everyone knows that. What are you on about?" No, oh, you shit out there. I'm not doing the Welsh do the impression. No. Do it, do it. So, honestly, when you did it before, I was like, "I hope you do that when you tell the story." Later. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm nailing the Welsh, so I'm not going to do it on the show now. Uh, do at it, what point does it? I mean, this is a deep conversation. I often think this. Like, at what? When, when is it racist and when isn't it racist? Mm. You can do, you can do a dodgy accent like for Welsh people, and that's all right. Someone put a really weird comment in the week on because uh, you know. I'm, I keep an eye on everything, you know, all our socials, whatever, and, you know, I'm uploading the clips and what have you. And someone put, you know, the clip of you doing the, when when you talk about that Italian couple. Yeah. Someone put a comment on that, did you see it? No, saying it's it, racist. No, just just said, uh, ah, it makes sense now why Kofi's into conspiracy theories. And so I just replied <laughs> and put, Do, does it? That's mad. Yeah, what, why? That's, and did they reply? No, I want to know whoever I that is. Know. Get in touch. What do you mean? Because I did a shit Italian accent. Yeah. What's the connection? I'm failing. I'm honestly. <laughs> like, my brain's trying to figure it out now. My brain just went. Does he mean the Illuminati? Is that think I'm in the Illuminati? Because I did it. I don't get is it. The, the Illuminati Italian. <laughs> what am I talking about? I don't know. That's um, mad. If, that, if that's you, get in touch. But I yeah, know. caravan would be boss to have. Was, so maybe that's an old age thing. Was one thing I was going to mention. The, but did the kids enjoy it? Yeah, they were bang into it because yeah. I got I got a message off Kelly saying like they'd enjoyed themselves and all that like so, and then I was even saying to Debbie like, "Do you want to go ask on a caravan? <laughs> How much are they? <laughs> maybe we should get maybe we should get a TLC one. What the, but you know what? We as could, well, like, it, and we could re- we, we could give it, give weekends away for prizes and yeah. That. It was funny as well though because I wondered who'd started this. So like I looked out the you know I was washing the dishes and I looked out the, the like the the kitchen bit window if you like, and there's a sign on the caravan opposite me like. Um, you know, say my buzz be way and all that, like a little Man United sign. And I was like, Max. And then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I think that's what your brain did. Max. <laughs> and then when I, when I sort of, like, like, when we went out and we're like walking around, there was like loads of them. There was like a pool one, there was an, a few Everton ones and all that. And I was thinking, I wonder, I wonder who started, started that. that. You know, yeah. like someone just did it and then someone else saw it and go, I'm going to get one of them. But do you know what I like about places like that? That's where it's like... That's where it's like football rivalry at its best, isn't it? So everyone's doing that. Yeah. And like the the, the mics will be in there kind of going, fucking scousers. Yeah. But then you see each other in the bar or 
do you, your kids are playing all that. You just have a laugh about it and well, you have a chat. That's nice. what Cara said to me. He went, hey, if you had one of these, you'd well get one of them signs, especially if you lived opposite them. Like, And I went, get one of them signs. I said, I'd hire someone to paint six European cups on the side of the caravan and they had to look at it every morning. <laughs> well, if you were living there, you'd be getting, you'd get the pub started, wouldn't you? I'm with you. I can't believe they haven't got an Ian Rush thing. Oh, I know, yeah. That's mad, isn't 100%. it? 100%. I mean, you, you know, like there, there, was a, there was blue plaques for other things in there as we were walking around. Like there was one for a... Uh, there's one for the fella who wrote the song, uh, Pack Up Your Troubles, and, you know, like, all detail around that. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. But, you know, he didn't score all them goals for Liverpool. How is he like, better than Rushy? Yeah, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, I'm surprised, surprised they haven't got on that one. And the car went, you know, well, he's not dead, is he? And I was like, well, he doesn't have to be dead. He's he's, he's not playing football for Liverpool anymore, so he's not going to score anymore. So, you know, like, if you put, like, that he scored, you know, 359 goals or whatever it is... Um, it's not going to change. It'll be right forever. Do you know what I mean? Well, unless so, he makes some um, and, uh, unless, you know, someone, strange comeback. Yeah, no, and, and no one's going to beat that. He, you know, I know Mo would love to beat it, but he's not no, going to. We were talking about that the other week, weren't yeah. we? Like, it's, it's, not, it's crazy yeah. numbers. So, so get it built, get it done, get yeah. it mentioned. Do you know what I mean? Um, a bit mad. The other thing I did um, over the weekend, I did the Coronation Street tour. Mm, I'll do the game. Um, I, I have to be honest, it was Bosch, you know. Was it? <laughs> so, you know, like... Go the, on, we'll talk us through it. What... What, how does it actually work? Because I've seen people go on it before and seen pictures, but you only ever see the same picture, which is like Joe the behind, Rovers. The, behind the bar at the Rovers yeah, and yeah. On, on the street. So, so what, how it does it work? It, it's, like a, it's like a, you know, you've got like a tour guide with you, like taking you through. And it's, you start off like you go into like a little theatre, nice seats, and uh, they, they show you like a seven minute film. And it's like clips from all down the year, all different characters, but like really well done to be fair. Mm. And like, you know, loads of dead funny bits and like, you know, you're just watching it going, oh, Curly, oh, whoever, yeah. oh, Maxine, remember it? Or whatever, you, you know, all of these characters. Because I think I said on the other week, like, you know, I don't watch it anymore, but it did do. Yeah. Like for such a big chunk of my life, like, you know, because my mum and dad watched it, both sets of grandparents watched it. Mm. So it's just, it's just been in my life for a long time. And mm. okay, I don't watch it now, but... I mean, you can pick it up. Like, you know, like Debbie watches it and sometimes I'll just watch an episode and it's the same, the same you know, story. Steve's still kicking around. And I, I love and... that. When you do, you just pick up an episode and Steve's still in it. Yeah, yeah. Steve's always <laughs> Steve's in it. Steve's in it forever, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Fucking a lot. Well, you know, and so did all the street cars, so street cars, Roy's Rolls, Rover's Return, Sally's House, you know, or, or Dev's Shop, even like the little back alleyway and like the back of the Rovers and stuff like that. But, um, the crack was that, I mean, like, a few people sent me like messages because I put a few like um, pictures up on my Instagram stories and people were like, oh, could you have a pint in the Rovers? You couldn't. Um, apparently, like when they were getting rid of the old set in Key Street, there was a time when you could for a bit. Mm. Um, but this is now like a you know, big purpose built outside set, basically. And the inside sets are in a warehouse and you didn't get to go and see that bit because I think they don't want you like messing with it for like continuity. I never uh, told you, by okay. the way, that... Um, <laughs> So when uh, when I was involved with the Anfield rap, um, probably let's not go into great detail just in case, but like I ended up uh, just because on the set of Cold Feet. Um, mm. And so we're having a look around and all that. And like, I don't watch it. I never have watched it. Like I'm, you know, aware of what it is. Yeah. But, um, and they were like, this is such and such house. This is the kitchen. Blah, blah. And as we were walking through the set and I was looking at the kitchen, there was like loads of stuff on the fridge. You know, like there was like a notice board and loads of fridge magnets and things like that. And I just thought, stuck an Anfield rap sticker among all the stuff. I think I remember that, And yeah. it was on. It was on the telly. Really? Yeah. Didn't it, what, did just, do you think they just didn't spot it? They just it? didn't spot it. And so like, you know, there's a scene where, you know, what, the woman's sort to the fella or whatever. I don't know the characters. And I, um, someone spotted it and like tweeted it to me saying, I've just been watching Gold Feet and there's an Amphia rap sticker on the fridge. It's mad that, isn't it? <laughs> so I, I think stuff like that is probably why they don't bother having yeah, me. And, you, know, you well, you're me in the particular. Reason, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking knobhead. Uh, put yeah, stickers up on like our me, scene. Messing continuity up. But it, it was dead interesting. Like, And it was like, you know, the, like you know they were explaining about the how they built the sets and how things you know like this looks small or thin but on the telly it looks real and blah 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 this is this you know this is the police station but the other side of it's this and like just it was boss was that weird yeah like with the bits where you're like yeah it, it messed with your head a little bit yeah it was strange and it but it was good like you know the, like i said the inner child in me was absolutely loving it yeah. i was just like whoa you know what i mean like yeah. it was like well it's funny isn't it because we've 
<laughs> it'd, be, it'd be interesting for, for the viewers and listeners, like who knows of Corey and like who who was brought up with it. Like, because I think, especially especially from if you're from the northwest, it's sort of you've just been brought up watching. Because I remember I lived in London in my early twenties. And they were all in, and it was like, it was like a territorial thing. Like mm. this lad, he was, he was probably 10 years old than me. I was living with in a shared house and he was like, they all watched EastEnders. And I went, oh, I don't really, I'm, I don't really, I've never really watched EastEnders. Like I'd watch Coronation yeah, Street. No, and they, really and they were like, oh, Coronation Street shit, isn't it? And I went, I remember saying Damn. to them, no, it's well better than EastEnders. And they were like, what do you mean? I went, whenever I've watched EastEnders, it's dead like dark yeah, and like grim. grim. I went, but Corrie's like, it's like a comedy. Like they have proper like comedy characters in it and like they have dead good writing and it got him into it. Like I remember he started watching it and a few weeks later he was like, it's fucking boss Corrie, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Because it is, isn't it? It is like, it is like a, quite like a lighthearted. Yeah. I mean, loads of mad things have happened obviously. And I, all did, that. I don't know. They started, well, they started, they got to a point, didn't they, when they started going like, we have to do the heavy serious Well, they were explaining about like, you know, like if you remember when they had the tram crash and it came off the thing and, yeah. you know, like all that, and they were saying like that cost like, I think they said over a million pounds and like, you know, when they've done some special effects on the set, like there was a fire or something somewhere, I don't know if that was involved with the tram crash or what, but she was basically saying like, it was so realistic that like, people in Salford were like ringing up saying like, you know, the set's on fire there. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it was like, no, no, it's all right. It's meant to be. It's not, yeah, it's, it's meant to look like that. But I, I got a funny, for those people that know who, who are watching or listening, who know who Tony Barrett is, uh, obviously works for the club these days. Uh, I just got a message off him. He obviously saw the story and all the message said, <laughs> all the message said was, uh, you must really like her. <laughs> 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 Which I thought was hilarious. Like, uh, genuinely made me laugh. Like, so yeah, well then. I, mean, I also forgot to tell you that um, I think we met, we mentioned on last week's show, didn't we, about going down to Southampton and all that. I forgot to mention to you that um, when I got back, went for a bevy in, uh, in the oldie, mm. old Rome. Mm. And, uh, you know, I was conscious that, you know, I was getting up to do this the next day. So, I only had a couple and then I was like, ordered a cab. And I was walking across the car park to go and like meet the cab because instead of pulling a car park, I just parked on the road. And some fella, like I hadn't walked in front of him or said anything to him or had any interaction with him inside. Well, I say fella, he was quite young, like, um, with his with his missus in the in a car, like. And like he pulled up like alongside me, rolled the window, roll, you know, rolled, rolled the window down and start, started saying that he was going to mow me down. And like I genuinely to 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 this moment now don't know what that For was what? all about. Well, like, that's what I mean. He's just no, you fucking prick. I'll fucking blow you down. Blah, 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 blah. From right. nothing, like nothing had happened. No, like no to sixty. Like and I was <laughs> he like, just took, he just took a look at your face and thought he's the type of lad to like to mow down. The only thing I could think was the way blues in there, and obviously they'd stayed up, hadn't they? But like again, I didn't have any interaction with them. Like all these reds piled off the bus, went in the club, no but no bother in there. It was sound, good atmosphere in there. There was like one lad in the bog, but it wasn't him in the car. Who'd said he was waffling onto his mate. And he went to me, "You, you a blue or a red?" And I went red, and he went, "Oh, this doesn't concern you, then." And I went, "Shut <laughs> um, But so, but there was no, you know, you know, there was no like, "You're that tit off X," or you know, "You've done," you know. There's no explanation. It was just, "I'm going to mow you down, lads." Just like, Sammy. But then what drove off? Well, I just gave him some back, obviously. Like, I'm not just going to, st you know, stand there and listen to someone. What did you say go. back to him? I said, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, you be you, you showing off in front of your missus, you bell <laughs> Was his missus in the car with yeah. him? Yeah. He was like leaning over her to say it. And I was just like, what? Absolutely <laughs> wild. I love the way your first reaction was to just give him shit back, oh, though, yeah. without going, what the fuck are you talking oh, about? No, I just got stuck in. I said, he's trying to show off, like. <laughs> Trying to show you your boss and that hard because your missus is sat there. What Mow did he me say? down, you blur. What did he say? He just more abuse. Like there was no explanation for it. And I just said, ah, fuck off. And I just walked down and got in my cap. <laughs> it's just bizarre. But like, honestly, like, ever since I've been racking my brain going, well, what was that about? Did I do something? Like, That's mad, isn't it? Completely draw a blank. Do you, I've do no you idea. Have, I always think of though when, when stuff like that happens. And this is mad when you think back to like, Something your granddad taught you. Do you know what I mean? I, my granddad taught me. Granddad taught, some of the things I think back and think my granddad taught me. Like he fought in the war and that. So, so proper hard fella. Do you, I always think this when you've got scouts who think they're dead hard and you're like, they're like kicking off on the lads from Eastern Europe who've like lived through wars. Yeah. And you're like, 
I probably wouldn't, you know, mate. He'll, be, he'll, he'll just ch- chop your head off and doesn't give a fuck. But I remember my granddad must have taught me this when I was about 10. And I've always remembered it since. He was like, son, you never have to worry about anyone who threatens you. He mm. went, the people you need to worry about have already done it. Yeah. <laughs> like, if he's going to mow you down in a car, he's not going to give you five minutes notice for it. He's not going to he? pull up alongside yeah. me and hey, explain mate, excuse, was... excuse me, sir. Uh, just in yeah. a few minutes, I'm going to run you over in my car. Like, oh, that's just yeah. not going to happen. It's like the, the number of times it's like it's like Scrappy Doo, Joe yeah. in, in, Sco- in Scooby Doo all them years ago. Let me hold him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Know, what, what, hold the angle, you. There's no one right, holding. There's no one holding you back, mate. What are you going to do? You've already driven past me and you you side on to me yeah. with the window rolled For you down. to mow me down now, you'd have to back up the street, yeah. turn around, do a three point turn, come up onto the curb. You'll be on CCTV. You you, there's your registration plate. <laughs> you've not taught this. Out. This is what you do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that was absolutely bizarre. Um, so uh, a little update uh, moving on. So in, in March, uh, regular listeners or watchers may remember that while down a, a chat GPT wormhole, I was asking her about John Aldridge. Um, it was highly claimed then at the time that Aldo had a celebration called the Trouser Dance. Um, and one of the subscribers, uh, Carl Trotman, who the eagle-eyed may remember sat in on an early TLC show. He recently went to an event over in Ireland with John Aldridge and Ray Alton. And so he decided to front uh, this mystery celebration with, with the man himself. And he sent me a message and he made the, the message just said, mate, uh, you'll love this. I'm at a meet and greet with Aldo and Houghton. I've managed to show Aldo your trouser dance clip from the show. Uh, he fucking fell around the place laughing. He said, tell your mate, you, that it's a complete load of fucking bollocks. The internet is shite. <laughs> and then he just put what a fella. And, you know, it was complete with a picture uh, with Aldo and Houghton to, to prove it. So I, I, love, I love that the trouser dance thing has now been yeah. put to Aldo. I know. I lo- well, it's funny because you had an opportunity to do know, yourself the other week, didn't you? Like, thought, well, no, I, I, I mean, I just thought... If it's that, I, I thought you'd have to go through the process of explaining what chat GPT is. But I agreed with you when you said that because of the because of the forum in which you were in. Yeah, it, it wouldn't could have just like ruined the whole thing, yeah, wouldn't it? Because you were doing an interview. And yeah. yeah, it could it, it could have turned into just him going, What are you talking about? He's this a nice fella, weird. though. He really, but so. I loved I loved the way like it I know we talk about us being middle aged, but he's like the next generation yeah, up, yeah, isn't yeah. he? The old and another older generation. I I love the way he just ended it with the internet is shite. Like just <laughs> Gen- generically, yeah. the whole fucking thing is just shite. And you're like, oh, that's boss. Uh, so that's well that. Um, so yeah, nice one for that, Carl. I uh, thought we'd give that a shout because I thought people would appreciate that one. Um, Crunch and Challenge uh, from last week then. Uh, it was milk chocolate hobnobs for milk chocolate digestives. Uh, we've moved on to biscuits. Uh, 57.7 for hobnobs, 42.3 for digestives. A, a predictable result, really. I, I knew Hobnobs would win. We only got 475 votes, so I thought I'd throw it out there. Rather than us turning up today with more, should we fuck this off now? Because I'm feel I, I'm I'm not feeling it massively about the biscuits. Like I don't. I feel like when we were doing the crisps, there was a lot of chat about it, and people were engaged with it. With this, I don't know. It just, it just didn't seem. It, it doesn't seem like it's sparking the same reaction. So maybe it's just me. Like, and if people say. No, no, crack on. But what uh, well, do you it think? Might, well, I, it's funny that you you said something that I thought, yeah, I'd already thought of that. I thought of it on Friday, which is we haven't even mentioned to each other. What no. are we doing this week? Like if we're doing categories each week, what are we doing? And um, and I, I thought a similar thing even before we started, like sometimes with this stuff. This is funny, it ties into like, you, did I ask you, did, did you watch Ted Lasso? Were you into it? Yeah. And they've done that thing where it's just finished. Like they've done three series and everyone's saying, are you doing another went one? Went on doing too long, one. didn't they? And no, well, I didn't think it went on too long, but I, but I've seen, watched a few interviews with Jason Stakus, who was one of the writers. And he said when they first started it, they modeled it on the, the English office. And I think that one of the hardest things to do in with anything creative is stop it when it's good. Like just stop. Do you know what I mean? Like Faulty Towers was one series. The English office was two series and some specials, I think, wasn't it? And and we've even said like one of our favorites that we both loved, the royal family, went on too long. Mm. And I think one of the hardest things to do is to just go, that was boss, don't do any more. And I sort of started getting a feeling like that about this when we finished the crisps, that are you trying to force it doing yeah. chocolate biscuits? And But then the, the other side of it, like 
because you know my brain loves to argue with itself. Um, it could just be that we we started the first week with two giants and, yeah. it, and the result was probably predictable. Do you know what I mean? Everyone, everyone well, was like, knob. well, and do you know what? Actually, Hobnobs didn't win by as much as I thought. They I would. know there was actually quite a fair bit of love for the digesters, which was good to see. But uh, well, let us know. Let us see. If you want us to waffle about biscuits or, or, or maybe chocolate bars after biscuits and all that kind of, let us know or, or should we just move on and, and leave it? Well, the other thing I want we'll to say as well, because, because other people have said this, so I thought, well, maybe we need to see if we can find a solution. Quite a few people have said, well, they're not on Twitter and they don't like Twitter and they'd get involved in the vote if there was somewhere else they could vote. Mm. So we could potentially, I was thinking, if so let us know about this as well, whether if we did this, it would help. We could do something like lash up something on the website. Do you mm. know what I mean? So you could just go to the website and do it as well. Uh, but it's admin, we, that, that is admin. I'm giving uh, myself another job there, aren't I? I know, yeah. Um, we got um, a message off uh, Lenny Oostenbaba. Um also known as Lenny from Lenny from Block uh, on Twitter. Uh, he said they asked ChatGPT to write a review of the podcast, um, and it's and it's done it. Uh, and so this is the review. The link. Uh, so before you write, read this out, right? This is well, the bit I'm not getting with ChatGPT. I think. And someone's asked a question. I don't know. If we'll get into it later because I am proper getting into like in like proper stuff, like learning about it now. And but it's cut off. Is it? Isn't it cut off still 2021? Or is he? When he's saying this, because there's a version that's plugged into Bing, isn't there? Because it's, it's Microsoft yeah, funded there's, by there's Microsoft. Yeah, there's a paid-for one, isn't there? That's, um, but has that got live information? Internet. Is that the one that's connected to Bing? Yeah. Uh, okay, so that, so that would make sense for this. that, yeah. yeah. Um, Go on then. But anyway, so he's got it to write a review. I mean, the other thing is that you can explain what it is in great depth, can't you? And then it, it'll, it'll review it on that basis. But, yeah. Um, so the review is the Late Challenge podcast hosted by the charismatic duo Robbo and Paul is an absolute gem in the world of podcasts with their unique blend of curmudgeonly banter and entertaining discussions. Robbo and Paul effortlessly engage their listeners and create an enjoyable listening experience. Robbo's curmudgeonly charm is, perfect, is a perfect compliment to Paul's unassuming wit. Their chemistry is palpable, making each episode feel like a conversation between old friends. It's refreshing to hear their genuine and unfiltered perspectives on various topics as they navigate through life's challenges with a healthy dose of humour and scepticism. One of the standout aspects of the podcast is the diverse range of topics they cover, from current events to pop culture, from personal anecdotes to societal issues. Robbo and Paul's breadth of knowledge shines through. They tackle these subjects with insightful analysis, making you feel like you're gaining new perspectives with each episode. Furthermore, their backgrounds bring a unique dynamic to the show. Robbo's curmudgeonly outlook, fuck off with that, <laughs> offers a refreshing alternative to the typical positive spin, while Paul's former legal expertise provides a fresh perspective on legal matters without overwhelming the conversation. <laughs> The balance they strike is truly commendable, resulting in a podcast that's informative and entertaining. Another noteworthy aspect of the Late Challenge podcast is the production quality. The audio is crystal clear, allowing you to fully immerse yourself in the conversation. The pacing is excellent, ensuring that the episodes flow smoothly and keep you engaged from start to finish. The show's format also allows for occasional guest appearances... No, it doesn't. Adding a delightful <laughs> v- variety to the mix. Ultimately, the Late Challenge podcast is a must-listen for anyone seeking an intelligent, thought-provoking, and light-hearted podcast experience. Robbo and Paul's genuine camaraderie, combined with their expertise and wit, make for an incredible combination. Whether you're a long-term podcast enthusiast or new to the world of podcasts, the Late Challenge is sure to captivate and entertain. So grab your favourite beverage, sit back, and immerse yourself in the delightful world of Robbo and Paul and the Late challenge podcast you won't be disappointed <laughs> you're happy with that lad i am happy with it yeah there's loads in it though isn't it? i love the way you started reading it in the tone of like the pot the talk sport one but it changed halfway through and then you came back at the end that, that entertained me I'm Do you know what i love about it as well come on, I love, well i messaged you last night when you sent me this saying i had to because i do it the certain words in life where you feel like you know what they mean but if someone said to you what does that mean You'd have to go. Uh, so I was like, I'm, I want to double check what that means because it Miserable called. It bastard. called. Yeah, well, it called it. 
it, it basically referred to us both as that to begin with. But then basically, as we went on, was, it was mainly you. Yeah. It used, used the word twice for you specifically. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, basically miserable owl cunt. Yeah, that's, that's cheers for that chat. Nice I mean, like, look, if the if the cap fits, you know, one of them in it. Uh, Ryan, Why does it call you Robbo and me Paul? I don't know. Why do I get me name, but you get you? Well, you, you are, you, you use both, don't you? Because like, even like when me, you and Matt talk, he calls you Paul. I don't call you but Paul. But it's weird, he only calls me Paul in front of you. What does he call your house from? Love. Baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> but you're, you're Kopi and Paul, whereas... Yeah, I you're mean, always Robbo. Yeah. Loads of people don't call me Gareth ever, do they? Yeah. Um, Someone asked me that. that didn't, who was it asked me that? The other week, is Gareth a... Ga like, and I was like, oh, no. I, I was like, he must be Gareth. Like, you have your full name in, in official worlds, don't you? Yeah. You don't go by... No one ever calls you Gary. No, fuck that. Yeah. It's not my name. I mean... The, 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 do you know, the, I was? have I ever told you that? I was going to be called Gareth. Was you? Yeah, I mean, we wanted to call me Gareth. And she, she didn't because she wanted people to call me Gareth. And she knew that people would call me Gary. Well, when so we, you've done well to get Gareth the I, whole time. There was like, uh, you, you know, there's some people that have tried to throw like Gaz in, not having that. Um, I, I, and like the, the Rob, Rob Gutman at the rap was like, you know, because he's Rob, like I, I, I allowed it with him. I don't know why. Because it works. So he yeah, calls me. I was just going to say, I've heard someone call you Gaz. He calls me. Rob, yeah, but, but, I he call him, with it. but I call him Bobby G. And like okay, he doesn't particularly yeah. like that, and I don't particularly like guys, but it's just you sort just of let like each other off. Yeah, we just let each other off. Um, Are you happy with it? With guys? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> with the review. With no, the review pretty, yeah. I mean, it's pretty good, apart from like continually saying like I'm, I'm a misery ass. Um, it's, it's nice. It's isn't pretty it? good. Like, and it, it's in depth, isn't it? It is in depth. Um, Are we going to take bits of it and make our own talk sport? Well, you, well, I was thinking, like, if, we, if we're doing, like, promotion stuff, you could have, like, what loads of people had said, and then you could have, like, chat GPT. Chat GPT yeah. um, it's long, though, isn't it? It is long. I, 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 I've kind of just thought, that. after reading it all out, loads of people might have got off going, fuck, yeah, fuck stop yeah. doing that voice, lad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, it. Jacob's made up, he's got a little shout-out today, though. Hasn't he's he? made up with the production quality, yeah, the production he'd be using quality. that on his uh, promotion film and yeah. all that for the studio. You could ask it to rewrite it in one sentence for a testimonial for, like, a headline. Uh, there you go. Yeah, that's a good that's idea. What you should have done. Uh, that's what you should have done. Who sentences it again? Lenny. Yeah, you should have said, uh, can you do three sentences so they can read this out quickly on the show. Uh, Ryan Dunn sent us a message on Instagram. Uh, he just said, all right, lads, huge fan. Um, I've been following it for a while. Saw on the latest pod that Paul says he signed up for an AI course. Was curious to learn about it. M mind sharing any details. And then he put <laughs> written with chat GPT and a little laughing face. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm interested in this as well. I, I've been meaning to ask you, so I'll, I'll, just, I'll just ask you on the show. Kill two birds with one stone. So what's the crack? Have you done it yet? Have you started it? Yeah, like I'm, so I'm towards the end of it so now. What's, what's just an online one. If I'm, because I, it's funny because I sell online courses or I haven't sold loads of them, but like I'm, I'm in, I'm getting into that world now. I love like buying other people's and like seeing how they do it and stuff. And so, and even like do the marketing for it. If I see someone who captures, cap, captivates me with their advertising, I'm like, oh. But it's someone who Matt knows actually. Our mate Matt through that world because he's huge and his name's Billy Jean but he's a marketing expert Billy Jean yeah Billy Jean yeah yeah not mad but he's boss <laughs> and if, if you're in this world like for this for this lad who's it Ryan if you're in this world and you've done marketing you'll know him like you'll have seen one of his adverts I mean he's he's big like he does loads of advert, advertising on like YouTube and that um, and it's good but I mean it's it's targeted mainly at marketing and business but it, it's got like it, it sort of goes wider than that as well and it is boss mate like the shit, the shit I'm learning, but it's not just through that. I've, I'm delving into loads of stuff. Now I've, I've signed up for so many. <laughs> do, you, do you ever do that? You sign up for newsletters and then you realize you've signed up for too many newsletters and now I'm just getting, yeah, and it's like I ping, don't ping, read ping, any of them. And, like, yeah. and you're like, all right, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to narrow that down. But yeah, I've been, cause I'm working on a project for someone at the moment and they're into it as well. They they want me to so use. So what have you found out that you didn't know before? Like, do you know what I mean? Well, it's, I was laughing about this with a client the other day, right? Another a business client. So I was talking to them about it. Like I saw a stat saying only 14% of the people who could access it have in any form at the moment. And of that 14%, I went, the, the thing that this went on, it bangs on about this course more than anything else, which is boss, is it's just a tool. Like we, for us, and like having a laugh about it in the end of the world and all that, right now it's just a tool. It's like when the internet came out and 
However good the tool is, depends on how you use it. Yeah. I said to me, clients who are like two directors of a company, I mean, you've got to think about it like the internet. Some people used the internet when it came out just for watching porn and like learning about the Kardashians. But some people used it for porn and making billions. <laughs> Everyone used it for porn. But it's the same with this. Do you know what I mean? Like you can use it just for laugh, having a laugh. Or you can like when you get when you get properly into it. I'm getting a little I'm getting a little bit frightened about it. I need, I'm going to ask Matt about it because he'll be into it even further than me. Like you can train, you can literally train it yeah. to do stuff. So if it doesn't already know stuff, and I was thinking like so to teach it, for example, I could teach it to write like me and my style. And it's like the stuff I've been reading and watching lately. It's like so you upload some of your styles, and this thing was saying so just go upload a couple of your best blog pieces. But then I thought to myself, but I've written like a 650 page book and that book is basically what I think of the world as well as everything else. So I could upload the entire book. I was following this guy who's showing you how to do that step by step, like, and, and pr teach it prompts and teach it how to engage with you. And I was thinking, but you could train it literally to, to engage with you as a person, do you know what I mean? And be like, I'm going to call you this, this is my name. Let's engage properly. And I want you to follow all my projects and then give me feedback. But then I, as I was thinking about that, I was like, but what we're effectively doing then is training it how to be us. Yeah. So at some future point, it can just be me. Yeah. Well, That's I, mad, that, isn't it? I wanted to do something for me, but I'm not sure how, how to do it. I've only sort of like done a cursory search and, and whatever, but I, I might look into it a bit more this week when I've got some time. I wanted to like look for jobs for me. Because like no matter how many like job alerts you set up and things like that, or or like you know things that you join, it's still not that accurate. I don't find mm -hmm. like I, like googling yourself and putting more terms in and stuff like that. You sometimes will just uncut or, or, or it, you know Google sometimes doesn't seem to find certain sites or it'll be low down the list and you, you know you'll have to go to a few pages and go well oh, what the, oh yeah I'll have a go for that. And I just thought well if I can get program something somehow. AI to just be, look, you know, to know what I can do, look at my CV, look at my LinkedIn, whatever, and then fuck off and go and look and then let me know when there's something there. That'd be boss because I hate looking. You know what I mean? But this the thing there's probably already, because it's open source and anyone can build stuff off the back of it. There's, I follow a few people on Twitter and like every day, it's like, these are the 10 new things that come out today. Yeah, yeah, right. Someone well, will yeah. have built that tool already. Yeah. But if anyone's out there who knows uh, something that I can use, let me know. The other thing is, I was thinking about like, you know, I've written my own CV for years. I'm like, you know, I like to think I can write and I'm all right and at, at stuff like that. But equally, I thought it'd be interesting to get someone to do it for me and, and see what they come back with. So I was looking at all these different services and stuff and I got like this free review. And, and the, the, the review that came back, I thought, yeah, okay, I, I get what you're saying. But then like I read some reviews of that particular site and they weren't all good. And I just thought, mm, okay, you know, it wasn't that good on Trustpilot and stuff like that. So I left it. Then I found another one that did have good reviews and I submitted my CV to it. And they just haven't replied. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, well, I'm I'm not gonna go with you now because you haven't replied. Yeah, but this is this is my thing for people like, and this is why the reason I'm delving into this properly, right? Is I like I in in this in my serious world with serious hat on. Like we shouldn't underplay this. This is like this is this is the new gold rush, and you either you either embrace it and get at the front of it, and make shit loads out of it and learn loads out of it, or you'll be left behind. It's as simple as that. Like mm -hmm. there is no holding this back now. You can, and people can argue about this as much as they want. I remember there's a fellow I've followed. I've mentioned to you in the past, but Gary V, who's a big social media yeah, influencer, yeah. he's always said that about social media. He said you can sit around, and, and I used to be one of those people, sit around moaning about it, saying how bad We're it is, and so. Involved. And he said you can do that, or you can just accept that there's hundreds of millions of people, billions of people who yeah. like it and are using it, and get involved and use it for what it's there for. Use it for good. Do you know what I mean? It's the same with this. It's like, even that, what you just said, I was, this is what I was saying to, I've got business clients who I advise, I was saying to them, you have to get it artificial intelligence involved in your business now. And you've got to use it to make your business better because mm. otherwise you will get replaced. Like those services that you've just mentioned, they'll be replaced because you can, especially if they're not you're replying, they're not giving any personal service, they're not doing any That's human like, stuff. Like, I just thought you can do that, that with ChatGPT. You haven't replied to me. I was prepared to pay you a couple of hundred quid there for me CV. And then you just haven't replied. But, and so now I, if you do, I'm going to be like, lad, you took four weeks to reply. But mate, literally what they do is something artificial intelligence can easily replicate. Mm. I didn't tell you about like, so I've written, for this 
I'm, I'm raising money basically for a company that wants to like raise raise money for investment into this big new brand. It's it's boss like they, they're gonna disrupt the the toothpaste industry. It doesn't sound very sexy on the face of it, but it's a bit like do you know when Red Bull came out or Dollar yeah. Shave Club, if you know what that is. Because if you go down like the toothpaste aisle in your in your supermarket, think about it. When was the last time anyone did anything new? Mm. And when you, as soon as you see that, you're like, oh yeah. And they showed me this new brand age. Was that like, black gear? Yeah, that was mad. Oh, but, there's, but there are new stuff coming out now. But they, like, <laughs> did, well, the Kardashians you know, have like, done it. Hang on. I don't want my mouth to be black when I brush my teeth. Well, have you seen the Kardashians <laughs> one, the purple one? No. And it's boss. It's like, again, scientific. Makes but your mouth purple. It's purple, right? But on the colour wheel, purple and yellow are opposites. So if you mix them, it creates white. So it makes you teeth go white it's all gear? over tiktok do you remember that gear that the, the, the was it at the, i'm sure it was at the dentist when we were kids and like you could like swill this stuff and it showed if like you'd yeah. brush your teeth properly yeah yeah remember that? yeah i think yeah because i had to get taught how to do it <laughs> but, 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 but why would you have to be the opposite of that so like well, no, you don't no. want to show people where your plaque is on your teeth no no but i mean like to, to check that you're brushing properly I don't know. But anyway, right. So I had to, I've been doing all this work, right? And I wrote, because we're going to do this, I'm going to do a video like for the landing page that, won't bore you with the details, but right, the landing page where it sells, tells you what the whole thing is, the whole story is in the investment. So I wrote the script based on what my knowledge and what, you know, what I would do. And then I put it into ChatGPT. I told ChatGPT what the project was, what we were doing, what the script was for. And I said to it, rewrite it for me but make it as compelling as you possibly can so that by the end of it, people would want to invest. It did it once. And this is something I've learned about layering stuff, right? So you can, the best thing you can do with it is train it step by step and layer it. And then I said to it, right, do it again, but write it in the style of Tony Robbins, the motivational speaker and like um, life coach. And then do it again in the style of Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, because he's a top sales guy. And mate, it's frightening. It's frightening. I, I basically sat there for an evening doing work as if ChatGPT was sitting next to me, like as my assistant. And I used to do that. That, that it is handy for that. There's no two it's ways about absolute, it. Yeah, but yeah. it. But that, that's why I wanted to learn, because that, that, what that course was saying is, it's it's like the internet, it's like Google. You, the quality of what you get out from it is all about the quality of what you put into yeah, it. Yeah, 100%, yeah. So the better you get at that, and that's, that'll, be, that'll be a thing. Did you see someone asked it, like, because everyone's banging on about the jobs that'll be lost through it, but someone asked ChatGPT, what jobs will be created by AI and things like that will be created. Mm. Like learning how to properly prompt AI. I think, well, I mean, AI, AI, just quickly, I know we talk about, end up talking about AI loads on here, but I just think it'd be, it can be brilliant for, for education, can't it? Like, you know, I was listening to a podcast about it and it was just saying like, you know, if you think about the resource that could go into like having like an AI character that teaches you in classrooms and stuff, but you know, it's able to just switch between languages, you know, it's able to, you know, with, with ease, you know, like, so, so you could create a product that was absolutely brilliant for kids and then like roll it out or across the world dead easily because this can do it for you essentially. And I was thinking, you know, it could, it could be absolutely, brilliant. you know, we, we focus a lot on the, the negativity of it, but it could be absolutely brilliant for education, couldn't it? And when you think about like, you know, we all know that some schools are good and some schools are bad and all that kind of stuff, you know, like creating something where like you're evening that out a little bit can only be a good thing, surely. Yeah. Um, Okay, yeah. let's move on to uh, the fact of the week then. So as you're a Whittle lad these days, mm. uh, I've gone uh, for a Whittle-based one. Uh, I have to say thanks to Paul Brooks who got in touch with me I, and just sort of like gave me a few Whittle-based nuggets uh, for potential, you know, for me to look into. And uh, this was the one that grabbed my attention. So this is um, the oldest standing building in Merseyside which is in fact in Birkenhead. Mm. Um, so it's unsurprisingly uh, a grade one listed building. Uh, it's on Priory Street in Birkenhead and it is the Birkenhead Priory. Uh, it's near Camelards and it's sort of sandwiched between industrial units. And it's just sort of, you know, you can tell it's been like saved, do you know what I mean? And then stuff's built around it and it looks a bit mad that it's there, but you can go and see it and stuff like that. I might go and have a look actually after finding all this out. So it's a, a Benedictine monastery or Benedictine monastery from 850 years ago. 
uh, it, it was home to a small community of monks who used it to pray, farm, and they gave hospitality to travellers and operated a ferry across the Mersey, which is boss. Uh, in 1536, after nearly 400 years, the Priory was closed by uh, Henry VIII. Uh, the monks dispersed and most of the Priory buildings fell into ribbon. Um, but yeah, they, 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 I mean, it, it's sort of long said to be, you know, these were the first ones to run a ferry across the Mersey, which is dead interesting in itself. Uh, and they reckon that, you know, well, a, a piece of Reddit said, at this time, the Mersey was considerably wider with sand dunes and marshes to the north leading up to Ainsdale and sandstone cliffs and shorelines in the south around Otterspool. So the only suitable landing point for the ferry then was in the pool, as it was called, uh, near the site of the present Merseyside Police Headquarters, mm -hmm. um, where there often stopped crossings and passengers could be delayed for days so they would take shelter at the Priory. Uh, went down this big rabbit hole with all of this, and uh, there was actually, there's actually claims that there was an earlier ferry than the monk because it's mentioned in the Doomsday Book of, of um, 1086. And this reckon there was a stone slipway at Seacom on the northern side of Wallasey Pool where Kelvin Road meets Birkenhead Road today. Uh, and it reckoned there was some kind of uh, ferry situation going on there that ran over to somewhere near where St. Nicholas Church is in Liverpool. So I just think all that's uh, dead interesting. And then another little sort of um, off to the left thing about this is that you've got the priory, but then there's also the remains of a church around it. And, this, you know, that that's in better nick because it was the first parish church, 1821. Now there's a tower and a spire. You can still climb the steps and get a, a view of the maze and all that. But this tower right next to the priory is, is now a dedicated memorial to 99 men who lost their lives in a 1939 disaster aboard a Laird's built submarine called HMS Thetis. Uh, now, I didn't know anything about this. I'd never heard about this, but basically they were trialing this submarine in Liverpool Bay and it, it, it all went wrong and one of the, the torpedo um, chutes messed up, water got in. Um, someone panicked when they were trying to get out and, and drowned in like this sort of void thing and, it, and ended up like blocking everyone else and you know, 99 people perished. Um, but also, like, it's just a dead fascinating story. I could sit here and talk about it for ages, but, I, you know, realise we've got to move on to other stuff. But when I was reading up on it, you know, they got condolences from the world over, basically, for mm. this situation, including from Hitler. Because this is, pr this is just before the war, yeah. Um, so that's mad in itself. And another little sort of aspect that I stumbled across while I was, while I was reading up on all this is that only in... You know, 1801, okay, it's a long time ago, but it's not that long in the grand scheme of like life, yeah, yeah. is it? So this this really struck me and I just thought, wow, that's amazing. So in 1801, the population of Birkenhead was 110 people. That's, just one, 110. That's wild, that isn't it? And the population of Birkenhead in 2022 was 109,000. And like, I was, I was listening to this, a podcast yesterday and I just like the way the fella said this actually he was saying like he was talking about like you know the way we live and and, and what we accept and, and you'll like this because I know you're into the you know the programming thing that you mentioned before and he was saying like it's mad if, if you think about cities and towns and all that and that we just accept that that's normal and that's the way we should live but that was that, that was obviously built all over land. That was once countryside and, and marshes and cliffs and all the stuff that gets the mention there. And we just completely sort of, I, I think you can almost go through life and not consider that, can you, for a moment, you know what I mean? You're like, well, what was here before, before you built all this metropolis or whatever, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's mad that, isn't it? Yeah, but I, but it's mad because it's one of the one of the things on that, to tie it into the AI course I was talking about, he was saying how, how that, like, it's the certain things we just assume, like that fella saying that you you were listening to, will change or could or will change dramatically over the next decades. Because one of the reasons we built cities and towns was because pe people needed to be closer together and you know, commerce and things like that. And even even things like now, you know, work in capitalism, capitalism societies, you work inside office buildings, but even from the back of the pandemic and remote work and stuff. you didn't need to, yeah. Now that's shown people you don't need to. And 
Yeah. On it, like there's loads of companies who've gone, okay. So that means if you don't have to be in Liverpool City Centre for your job or Manchester City Centre for your job, you can live anywhere. Because So this guy was talking about like the impacts that has, the knock-on effect. You've got to look at As long as you've got Wi-Fi to go well, back to the Patreon show. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But he was saying even things like, you know, property investment. So property investment traditionally has been a dead, steady investment. You know, but that assumes, for example, you know, if you invest in, because he says, people always say the same line, there's no one's building any more land. You're like, yeah, but there's still loads of land we haven't used. Mm-hmm. So that, that line only works when the land is limited to build on inside dense populations. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like cities, where it's like, well, there's, where else? You can only build up inside the city most of the time, so it's dead valuable. But as soon as everyone goes, well, I don't want any land here then, I'll just go and buy some of that land that's in the middle of nowhere and I'll live out there. It could change everything. I know, but but you do need Wi-Fi. That's the only uh, limiting thing with the way we are now. So I wanted to ask you as well, because we were talking about Birkenhead. Um, I just thought... I'd ask you about about Wirral life because you know you've obviously like been living over there for a bit now, and I'm I'm like, you know, there's plenty of Wirral that I've taken in over over my life. Do you know what I mean? Like I always used to go to West Kirby with my nan, uh, New Brighton, things like that. Um, used to regularly go and watch Tranmere Rovers at one point and things like that. But equally, there's loads of loads of it that I've never been to. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Um, and it's mad like it's only there, do you know what I mean? Like I remember like, you know, um, I was going out with a girl and ended up like, you know, going over there a bit more because she was from over there. And like going to like Thurston and stuff like that. I'd never been there. And I was like, this is lovely. It's this lovely, is boss, yeah. this, like, do you know what I mean? Um, so like I'm, I'm, it remains a bit of a, a mystery to me and I'm like sort of like curious about it. And I, I don't know, just what, what's your, what's your Wirral perspective? How's Wirral life, Kopi? I reckon, <laughs> I reckon. Well, I live in Wall. I've been living in Wallasey, right? So it's not the best part. And we're looking to like, where would we go next? That's mm-hmm. that's what that's what this phase now is. So we're doing it like because I'm the same as you. Like, and we joke about it. Like, it's funny that it is just there, just literally. We've me and you've probably spent more time in Manchester in our lives, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, hundred percent. Than in the Whittle, which yeah, is yeah, weird because yeah. it's literally just like it, it makes me laugh. Like even when I'm, I'll be running late for this show. Like I'll message you saying I'm running late, and I realize I'm only ten minutes away. Because it feels like I'm miles away, whereas where I grew up in McGull, it was you know, half an hour to get into town with a bit of traffic. Yeah, yeah. So like it, in There's my head, one about that, the wheel's um, fucking miles away, yeah. but actually it's well, closer. Loads of, people, loads of people do that, don't they? It's like, um, you know, half man, half biscuit. Someone told me they went to one of their gigs once and, um, you know, someone had, I think, I think someone had give like the wool shout out or something in the, uh, in the audience. And he went, uh, don't be giving the wool shout out because they're from Birkenhead, aren't they? And he was like, I'm not having this at all. Like I'm from Birkenhead, and if you're from Dovecot, well, Sam, they'll have you at a race to town, and yeah. I'll and I'll win. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's and a boss race, yeah. and it is a boss way of looking at it. Like, and it, and it, it's mad. Like you know, I was just saying to you, wasn't I, before we started, that I went to a gig in um, in Birkenhead, went to see the uh, stairs, and it and it was boss. Like the, yeah. the venue was great and all, and it was like walking distance from Hamilton Square, and. You know, I'd never sort of been even there before. And I was like, oh, the buildings are all right here. And like, you know, you know there's all, all that stuff, isn't that about, you know, the Birkenhead Park and it's um, inspiration for Central Park in New York oh, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And I, I just don't know it. You know, I've just, I've just hardly ever been there. And, and like, I don't know, maybe, like you can do, um, you can do a big, I, I always wanted to do that bike ride where you almost like, you do almost like the whole of Whittle, don't you? It's like a Whittle oh, way, isn't it? Oh, nice. I think, yeah. Well, I reckon, so my theory is this, right? And I'm I'm not, I won't settle on this yet. And I change my mind all the time anyway. But I think, especially as we're getting older, it'll be a nicer place to live. I've got this thing about it that, I feel, so like it's it's, all, I feel like it's a little bit up and coming now. I feel like, you know, there's bits of it. Like I like, I, I like, you know, the location of New Brighton. I just think it's a, it's would, a good so, spot. And so it's, it's, I think I could sell it to you, right? And I reckon you'd love it, especially because I know how much you enjoyed living out in the sticks. Do you know you live in that place mm-hmm. and talking about Wi-Fi and that yeah, was one yeah, of the yeah, problems yeah. with it? Because the thing about the Whittle is, um, I was like the clients I mentioned before, they they live over there and we met, we meet over there and stuff and, he was saying, he, he, Joe, he's born and raised there and he, he's just like his boss. And I went to him, do you know what I love about it? There's a motorway runs through the middle of the Wirral. So wherever you want to get to, you just jump on the motorway mm. and drive and then come off the motorway again. So there's none of this like, like when it, wherever you're driving where we're from, like you've always got to, even if you live in a nice place, you've got to drive through a scruffy place to get somewhere else. And it's all 
do dancing, do there's there's bits of like countryside and stuff like that, but not not you've got to go out into the sticks for more of that. Whereas I feel like the Wirral is full. As soon as like we drive out into like away from the further you get away from town, basically, it's just trees and greenery and. If we were having this conversation five to ten years ago, it wouldn't have appealed to me at all. But now I'm like, mm. what? What's your stance on on the Wirral as well? Because I used to work with someone, and uh, he was from Hoy Lake, and um, he um, used to fume at, at anyone and everyone who would say the Wirral. Did he? Why? And, and I what would did say, he, to what him, did he call it? Wirral. Wirral. And like, he, you know, he was a journalist himself, like, so he would insist, you know, like that. Grammatically, you know, he's like, that's like saying the bootle, the Liverpool, yeah, the or whatever. Liverpool, yeah. And I, my argument was always, though, I said, this isn't a scouse thing. This isn't like the Asda. You know, this is, if, when you say the Wirral to me, it's because it's the Wirral Peninsula and it's shortening of that, isn't it? I think. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. I've and never so thought That's about my that. justification for it anyway. So if you're saying, I'm going the Wirral, I'm going over to the Wirral, well, it's because it's a, you mean the Wirral Peninsula, the Wirral, the Wirral as a, you know, a collective as a place as a big yeah. Because what? Because this is my thing. What is the Wirral? It's a peninsula. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's the not leisure a leisure peninsula. But, they, but it's not like that's my thing. It's not, like Liverpool's a city, so you don't say the Liverpool. But Wirral isn't a town, is it? Wirral is a it's a landmass, mm. isn't it? Or am I talking nonsense? Well, I don't know. That's I mean, all it is, isn't it? Well, when you're mixing with your Wirral heads, what do they say? I don't mix with anyone. Don't, yeah. Other than other, ever, other, you a recluse. Yeah, I am. I'm a bit of a recluse. Yeah, and and do you know what? I'm proud of it. I really. I, do you I, go outside? Yeah, but not. <laughs> but I have to make myself. And it's funny you say about the sun because the sun does make me go. You should go outside. Man. Yeah, but it, but if I'm not, but that's why I need I need kids or dogs in my life to make me get off my ass. It's really funny we're going to say we both we got time to talk about procrastination. Don't know. We might have to put it off again. I, get, I love that. <laughs> I love that. It's one of my favourite comments we've had. Brilliant, man. Love it's Steve Mullen, yeah. Love so the I love that you were, So for those that don't know, on the on one of the Patreon shows, we had it down on the agenda to talk about procrastination and then we put it off. Yeah. And Steve, Steve pointed it out, saying, quite gonna, funny, though. And we're going to put it back in. Well, should we briefly again? talk about that? Should we move on to that? I mean, all that was, was um, I spotted a report in the, in the papers a few weeks ago that said over half of Brits have developed bad procrastination habits. And I thought it'd be interesting to bring it up with you because, you know, you've you've literally written books. I've edited them. Um, so, you know, I know how much work you put into them. And, you know, the the second one in particular is a, a big fella, isn't it? Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, I, and I did wonder, and I, I do wonder still now, sort of how you, how you found the focus to do it. Because, you know, I write, I write pieces, obviously, and, you know, for, for various outlets or whatever. And, like, I wrote something on Heisel, the other week for for this is Anfield and it was about two thousand words, and I was pleased with it. I was happy with it, but like I put loads of time researching into it, getting it right, an important topic, obviously, and that kind of thing. And I do, I do find at times it hard to focus because you know you got the internet there as a distraction, your phone, uh, your phone ping, and, and and you know like I'm dead interested in. I've just bought a, a book called Indistractable because I listened to the fella who wrote it on a podcast and I just thought it was dead interesting. I think I mentioned them to you the other weekend that he was talking about like making to-do lists and he said, oh, yeah. he said you shouldn't make to-do lists. And I thought, oh, well, this is interesting because I've always found them quite useful. But then when I started to listen to him and it's in the book as well, he just said a really simple thing and I've started doing it and he's absolutely spot on or, or I find them spot on. So he said, if you just write on a list, that's like outcomes, that's what you want to happen. So, you know, like I want to do extra. He said, you're not saying when you're going to do it though, are you? And he said, so what's better is to say, look at your day that you've got coming up look, and think about the things you need to do and literally put like from nine till 11, I'm going to write the high school piece. From 11 to 12, I'm going to go for a walk, you know, whatever. And I tried it and it was absolutely boss. Mm. Like it, it just for my mind or whatever, like it was, and he said, and he even put it, he said, instead of saying things like the internet to distraction or gaming's a distraction or, you know, watching the telly's a distraction, whatever. He said, if you want to do those things, just put them in as well. You know, so from this time to this time, I'm going to look at social media and there's no stigma. You're just looking at social media. And then when that time ends and your phone pings to say it's ended, Okay, back to writing the high piece or doing the washing up or whatever it might be. Do you know what I mean? And I just found that really simple thing brilliant. Mm. 
And I just thought, that's absolute genius. Why haven't I thought of that myself? Do you know what I mean? But, I like but, but I, you know, what What was your, what was your, how did you stay focused to write two books? Well, do you know what's funny about it? Because it, when you talk about that fella and the, the to-do list and stuff, it's funny because I've got some, I've probably got some like st- funny opinions on some of this stuff because everything I do comes back to because of my theory. I'm, conf- I'm, I'm conscious of confirmation bias in this but always comes back to my same theory in that book, which is it comes back to us and self-esteem and programming and all this, right? And what I realized was, I, my, this is my theory. There's no there's no such thing as procrastination. Procrastination is a big fancy word we've made up when we don't want to do something. That's it. And mm. the, theory, the example I've always given to people is, everybody has got something in their life, even people who would describe themselves as procrastinators. And I've coached people like this and I'll say to them, okay, forget all the stuff you're putting off. Give me the example of something in your life that you've done that you didn't put off. And like, what do you mean? I'm like, there's something you've done in your life and there'll be loads of them that you just did them. Mm. And they go, oh yeah. And the example I always give is, right, I've been to four European Cup finals or something like that, Champions League finals. They've spread from when I was 25 through to when I was 38 or something. I can't remember. When was the last one? It was more recent than that, wasn't it? But anyway, at each point in those in, in my life, if you'd have said to me, can you afford to go and do this? Do you have time to go and do this? I'd have said no. If it had been something else, I'd have procrastinated about mm-hmm. it, but I didn't. Why? Because I really fucking wanted to do it. Yeah. So I just did it. I didn't, I ignored all the excuses. I ignored all Whacked the distractions. The I got card. the money. I found the <laughs> yeah. time and I went. Why? Because I really wanted to do it. And procrastination to me is just a fancy way of saying, I don't really want to do it. So that's why we then get distracted and because we're looking for other ways. So, the, and this happened to me when I was writing the book, I was coaching someone. This happens all the time when, you, when I'm coaching people. I was doing this with them about something they were doing. And it was like, I have a little person knocks on the back of my head and goes, well, how about you, dickhead? You're, you're doing the exact thing you're talking to him about. And I'd been saying, I was in Mexico at the time and I'd been telling everyone I was writing a book, but I wasn't. I was procrastinating. I was putting it off. So I just sat down. This is this is the one question I, I give people now as the cure for all procrastination. Just sit down and say to yourself, whatever it is, do I want to do it or not? And if you want to do it, just do it. Mm. And if you don't want to do it, ask yourself why. What, And then dig into that. Because usually it's, there's some reason behind it. Like you're afraid. Like often when we're putting things off, we don't want to do it. I'm afraid of what will happen. Do you know, yeah. I'm, afra- I'm afraid of what people think, blah, 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 all this stuff. But then at least you figure out and... That was the thing that it ties into that fella you're talking about. It's about stop bullshitting yourself. This is what I say to people all the time. Just stop bullshitting yourself. If you want to, if you want to write a book, and that's what I did this night. I sat down and did that. I was like, do I want to write this book or not? Because if I do, I should just sit down and write it. And if I don't, I should stop telling people I'm writing a book and stop bullshitting everybody and bullshitting myself and just say to everyone, I'm thinking about writing a book because that's what I'm actually doing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And, and that works for me because you do just then go, do I want to do this or not? And if you don't, that's okay. If you want to sit and be on Twitter instead of writing a piece or cleaning your shoes or doing the dishes, just be honest with yourself. It's okay. Mm. It's okay to be a bit lazy. It's okay to not do stuff. And that just, for me, just wiped it out altogether. Well, I mean, just briefly, the the, the report says that Britain as a nation um, are procrastinators, that 55% of adults admit they've picked up a series of bad habits and putting off tasks. Uh, a poll of 2,000 adults found 40% make cups of tea, 41% flip on the telly, 39% idly check email accounts, uh, and this is all to put off studying or working, snacking, scrolling, social media, doodling little pictures, um, also make the list of top ways adults dodge jobs and gen x no sorry gen z i've picked up more bad uh, procrastination habits compared to any other uh, generation uh, it goes on and on and on and then there's a massive list at the end of this piece as well of like all the things that um top bad habits which stop brits uh, concentrating making tea or coffee watching the tally snacking checking emails going on facebook going to make a cold drink online shopping visiting news sites looking at instagram doing something on the to-do list that is not urgent uh whatsapping friends texting friends writing a to-do list cleaning 
putting a wash and load on, biting nails, going to chat to someone, going on Twitter, going on TikTok, starting a conversation with someone, cooking, looking at houses in your area that are for sale online, doodling drawings, cleaning your desk, surfing for holidays, going on Snapchat, singing or humming a song, <laughs> uh, chewing the end of your pen, brushing your hair and asking someone if they need a hand. What a list. <laughs> but, but, but what's brilliant at the top of that, just look, even in that article, which I hadn't read, right? Look, what, where does it say? Um, <laughs> I can't find that. It basically says, oh, we are. Top ways adult, adults jo dodge jobs. Uh, what we do to put off studying or working. Yeah. These are not fun things. Yeah. This is not a list of things we, we use to put off doing stuff we want to do. This is a list of things we use to put off doing stuff we don't want to do. That's all right. We're just fundamentally, this is one of my theories that I've come to. Fundamentally, we, we're all a lot happier if we just accept that we're a bit lazy and um, we weren't meant to be living in this fucking, going back to the, living in this metropolis. We were meant to just be walking around the fields, picking, picking fruit off things, off trees, yeah. you know, singing singing songs. Three's my sing humming. We're meant to be doing that anyway. Sharpening and slating, chasing after mammoths or something. Yeah, or oh, being chased <laughs> by mammoths. Like, <laughs> that we're not meant to be doing all this. It's no. shy, just stop, pack it in. Okay, well, uh, that's been episode 18 of The Late Challenge. If you want more, we have got a Patreon uh, where there are now a series of subscriber shows on there. I think we've done five now, have we? Five, um, five and to... 18, that's mad, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? So uh, they seem to be going down well. Uh, the feedback's been good. Thank you for providing that feedback. We do always uh, check that out. So yeah, check out the Patreon if you want more. Uh, remember to uh, follow us on all the socials, leave reviews, uh, like, share, etc. And yeah, we'll be back soon.